the highway stretched out before me like an endless ribbon of asphalt disappearing into the darkness of the night. Behind the wheel of my rig, I navigated the empty road with practiced ease, the hum of the engine and the rhythm of the tires on pavement, the only companions in the silent night. As I drove, the scent of diesel fuel hung heavy in the air, mixed with the sharp tang of metal and oil, a familiar aroma that filled my nostrils and clung to my clothes like a second skin. The road stretched on, mile after mile, the monotony broken only by the occasional flicker of a passing street lamp or the distant glow of headlights on the horizon. But as the night wore on, a sense of unease settled over me, a weird feeling of dangers, unseen, lurking just beyond the edge of my vision. My hands tightened on the steering wheel, knuckles white with tension, as I scanned the darkness for any sign of trouble. And then, I saw it, a figure standing by the side of the road, surrounded by darkness, their silhouette barely visible in the dim glow of my headlights. My heart skipped a beat. As I approached, my foot easing off the accelerator as I slowed to a stop beside them. The figures stepped forward, their features hidden in the shadows, as they reached out a hand in silent plea. With a pang of guilt, I hesitated. Should I offer them a ride, or drive on, and leave them to the mercy of the night? But before I could make a decision, the figure spoke, a voice soft and pleading, tinged with desperation. They were lost, they said, stranded on the side of the road, with no way home. Could I help them, just this once? Against my better judgment, I nodded, my heart softening at the thought of leaving them alone in the darkness. Opening the door of my rig, I gestured for them to climb inside, the scent of rain and earth mingling with the stale air of the cabin as they settled into the passenger seat beside me. As we drove on, the silence of the night hugged us like a heavy blanket broken only by the low hum of the engine and the occasional crackle of the radio. The figure beside me sat in silence, their presence a looming shadow in the confined space of the cabin. But as we neared our destination, a sense of unease settled over me once more, a nagging feeling that something was not quite right, a creeping sense of dread that clawed at the edges of my consciousness. And then, without warning, the figure beside me spoke, a voice cold and hollow, devoid of the warmth and humanity I had heard before. They thanked me for my kindness, they said, their words dripping with malice and menace. With a start, I realized the truth. The figure beside me was not human, but something far more sinister a creature of the night masquerading in human form. Panic surged through me like a tidal wave as I slammed on the brakes, the screech of tires on pavement echoing in the night. But it was too late. The figure beside me lunged forward, their true form revealed in a flash of fangs and claws as they reached for me with outstretched hands. With a cry of terror, I fought back my fists pounding against their twisted flesh in a desperate bid for survival. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, it was over. The creature lay sprawled on the floor of the cabin, its form twisted and broken, its lifeblood pooling beneath it in a dark puddle on the floor. Shaking with adrenaline and fear, I stumbled out of the rig and into the cool night air, the scent of rain and earth mingling with the coppery tang of blood as I gasped for breath, my heart pounding in my chest like a drumbeat of terror. But as I stood there, trembling and alone on the side of the highway, I knew that my ordeal was far from over, that the darkness that lurked in the shadows would always be waiting, ready to claim its next victim in the dead of night.